Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Seeds of Liberty podcast, episode six. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, iTunes, and Stitcher, and you can find all those links to theseedsofliberty.com. So today we're going to discuss um, taxation, the beautiful world of taxation. Uh, no small coincidence that yesterday was uh, National Extortion Day, and we have to give our um, our, our two cents to the discussion. Um, we have to, we're going to discuss whether taxation is theft or whether is whether it's a contribution, um, and what what does it mean that it's your civic duty, and what is a civic duty if there ever was a, such a thing. <laughs> um, so the way I look at these things, we I think we first have to establish a baseline of definitions before you start in any debate. And what is uh, what is a contribution or donation, right? Um, contribution is basically something given voluntarily, absent any coercion, right? There is no um, penalty or punishment if you do not give the contribution, right? That is the es essential definition of a contribution um, and on your own terms, basically. And so if we look at taxation <laughs> as a contribution, right, we have to immediately ask, <coughs> are there penalties if we don't pay? And of course, everybody understands that there is. You know, the, uh, there was a great Adam Kokesh video I was watching recently on it, uh, and he was asking people on the street, um, you know, is taxation theft? And like, of course not. Well, what if I don't pay my taxes? Well, uh, I think you have to. It's the law, isn't it? <laughs> so then how can that be voluntary, right? You know, coercion does not equal consent, right? So, you know, because, because um, you know, a mugger puts a gun to your head and says, give me all your money or else I'm going to kill you, that doesn't mean he's giving you a choice, right? That's not the definition of a choice. <laughs> That's called force. That's called coercion. Um, and in, the te in terms of taxation, it's called extortion. And the, the quicker that we can come to that realization and face economic reality, the faster we can um, seek um, you know, alternatives and seek to improve the world around us. So, so what do you think, uh, Jeremy? Well, I obviously would have to agree that it is a, a form of theft versus a contribution um, for the reasons you stated. You know, if you say these words, a lot of people will automatically get defensive. Uh, they believe that uh, we're being uh, either delusional at, at best, hyperbolic at worst, you know, or sorry, the other way around. <laughs> um, it's a matter of obviously, as you said, being coerced into paying it. Um, you know, most even the people that will say they happily pay their taxes. So they're not coerced in any way. Uh, you know, if you took away the laws enforcing that, how many people would actually continue to pay when there isn't that force that, that they're, they're ignoring at the time, but they, they have to know it's there, especially because they're the same ones that will throw that in your face and say, well, you know, you, you have to, it's the law. Um, and, uh, you know, it, that obviously goes back to our, our previous discussion on the belief in authority. And, and that's why, you know, for me, it's I, I, I like to ask questions like, well, how do they get that authority in the first place? You know, why why do why do we have to why is that the law? Why do we have to um, pay these taxes, especially because most people, you know, even the most hardcore statists will admit that there is portions of the of the government that they don't approve of and what they wish were gone you know whichever side of the aisle they fall on whatever their their you know pet project is um there's certain things that they that even they can't deny um that they would like to see out of the picture and and not have money spent on um but they will chalk that up to it being you know taking the good with the bad type thing um but with with the, the taxation situation, if they weren't forced to do so, you know, how, how likely would you be to pay for these small sections? And then what do you do if the government says, well, you're not really forced, but you still have to pay all or nothing, <laughs> um, you know, and, and, and they'll still be stuck in the same dilemma. Now, what do you do? Like, is, is it really voluntary are you really contributing or or are you being stolen from you know i, I like to use the example of a, a small neighborhood 
if, you know, say, you, you say, forget about government and it's just all that exists at the present moment is just your little neighborhood, 10 houses. Um, and everybody gets together and says, we want to do these, we want to do these things. We, we, we need to improve the streets. We need to, um, you know, get, a get a, a food delivery service in here. Um, you know, whatever it is. Um, and everybody agrees. Yeah, it sounds like a great idea. And they all pay in. Uh, they're all willing to chip in a little bit. Um, but, you know, what happens when you disagree? Is it okay to force your neighbor? Um, you know, and most people will say, no, they, they should understand that I don't, I don't want this and there's no force, so why should I have to pay for it? It's, and it's like, well, if it's not okay on that small scale, why is it okay when it's on a bigger scale? You know, why is it all of a sudden, how do the, you know, if you don't have that authority, if you can't force your neighbor or your neighbor can't force you into paying for services that you don't want to, where does government get this authority? And the authority comes from this, you know, here, here, here in the United States, it comes from this magical document that supposedly grants certain authorities. Well, who... Who, who produced that document, you know, it was a small group of men and they wrote in there that they have, that Congress has the power to lay taxes. Well, who gave them the power, <laughs> you know, and it's, but they, most people will, will automatically shut down and don't even want to discuss that because they get into circular reasoning where it's, well, it's, it's the law or that's the way it is. And, and, the, and it, was, they, it was decided and, and, and there was consent and, and you have consent by staying here. But they, because they, they'll, they'll do anything to stay away from comparing it to, you know, your neighbor trying to take this from you for the, the, the quote unquote greater good, you know, somebody even if they say it's voluntary, it's, it's not because there is always that threat of if you don't pay, um, you'll start getting phone calls from the IRS. If you mm -hmm. ignore the phone calls, eventually somebody will show up at your house. Mo most likely um, these days, somebody with a gun will eventually be showing up at your house in, in shorter order than it used to be. Um, because the IRS actually has its own SWAT team now. Um, so, you know, they, they'll, they'll show up eventually. And, you know, just like with any other law, the, the eventual logical conclusion to standing up and disobeying the law because you believe it to be morally wrong, uh, you know, the eventual con conclusion is, o can, is always, you know, the ultimate is your demise. Um, if you continue to, you know, if, if they come with guns and you resist, well, then they have the right to do whatever ne is necessary, uh, according to the law, um, to stop you. And most times that ends up in the person's death, um, you know, and but th th there's so much violence involved in taxation, but uh, to most people, they don't want to, you know, you just say theft and they block it out because they only picture a mugger with a gun directly in their face. That's what they think of as theft. Um, anything else they don't want to listen to, but you know, even if you describe these scenarios and and point out that, you know, why is it different when one does it and then the other? It's hard to argue against uh, the the taxation is theft slash extortion, um, but uh, most people just don't want to have that conversation because uh, they assume you're trying to per be purposely inflammatory. Um, yeah, they think they you think just, you're you trying just being to be rebellious. That's it. <laughs> You just want to. You just don't. You don't want to pay your fair share. That's what it is. That's it. You just hate authority. Uh, no, no. Uh, I, I have recently. I've recently uh, started taking the argument away from the whole theft thing, because if you do uh, consent to being taxed, so be it. It's not. It's not theft. I mean, like, uh, let me ask you a quick question, Danilo. Can you consent to rape? No, because then it doesn't become rape anymore, right? Mm -hmm. So when you do not consent to being raped, you're getting raped. Just like if you do not cons consent to being taxed, you're getting stolen from. And you cannot give consent on someone else's behalf. Mm -hmm. So either you're wanting the government to force your neighbors to pay up, and by neighbors I mean your fellow man, or... You believe in implied consent, which is an imaginary idea. Like, I can't come over and have sex with your wife 
and say, oh, it's just okay, you know, uh, it's for the better part of society. <laughs> she, she, uh, I, I, I implied consent for her. So there was no raping here. She, she agreed to this wholly by being on my property one day. So it, <clears throat> when you make the argument about consent, it's a lot easier to make it clear to people our stance. You know, I do not consent to these things, so therefore they are immoral. If a, you know, to quote Spooner, if taxation isn't theft, then a gang of thieves just needs to call themselves government for it to be legitimate. And, you know, it, it goes, you, you want to look at taxation like this. Would taxation, would people pay taxes if there was no one to enforce it? There would be a large majority that would pay, right? But you have to realize, you know, this this uh, uh, to be a little current. Ted Cruz, his he's running on abolishing the IRS, right? So his he doesn't realize that the IRS, the Tax Revenue Service of any country, I will not keep this America centric. The tax revenue collection of any country exists to keep the military afloat. The military exists to make sure that the tax revenue collection is done. Without both of them, they can't exist. They're a symbiotic relationship. So if you abolish the IRS and move to a flat tax, who's going to enforce that? The new IRS. The tax agency that makes sure you're paying your flat tax. So you're trading... You're trading one gun for another. It's like, uh, do you re would you rather be shot in the face with a shotgun or a rifle? <laughs> so, um, people don't realize that 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 you, you know, there's, there's these anti-war liberals that go, we we should just get rid of our military. Okay, well then, who's going to enforce the tax laws that you want to you uh, you want all these taxes to be redistributed for your communist means? Uh, didn't think about that. And then, you know, the, the, the conservatives, oh, we should abolish the IRS and, you know, get the government tax revenue collectors out of our lives. Well, don't you want a big bad army to protect this, this, this geographical location and put 900 bases across the world and be a global empire? Uh, yeah, I didn't think about that. How are we going to fund that? So this, you know, isn't really thought of by people. They never think of taxation. They just think of it as... You know, well, death and taxes, they'll always exist. You know, yeah, death and taxation will exist forever as long as men are willing to subjugate their neighbors. As long as man is willing to do, to, to rob from their, their neighbors and take from them without consent. And, and my whole argument, the only way I'll talk about it you know, I'll say taxation is theft here and now, but I'll say taxation is theft without consent. It is charging without consent. You know, when you go to Walmart or wherever you swipe your card, do you agree to pay this much? You have to press yes or no. The government is basically saying, swipe your card for me, and they're going to press yes or no. So it's, it's, there's no consent in the matter. Well, I think the government does shopping for you and swipes your card and then slaps you with the bill, <laughs> right? <laughs> of course. Yeah. Um, yeah, I got taxed pretty much like 44% of my, my income this year. You know, like, that's pretty terrible. <laughs> so. So you work, yeah, that's, that's the other thing is, um, you know, the extent that, that we're taxed, the percentage that we're taxed is the, per is the percentage that we're enslaved and that we work for free against our will. Right to support whatever whatever government wants to fund, you know, which is usually you know foreign wars, occupations, drone strikes, welfare, um, bailout subsidies, all this crap that uh, does not improve anyone's life except uh, special interest groups and the uh, and the you know the corporate fascistic machine. Um, but I, I like I like um, you know Jeremy was talking about uh, legal plunder, which I, I, I like to look at it like that, you know, because when you simplify it down into a very, um, you know, um, rudimentary um, situation, it helps people to understand. However, some people tell me when I do that, like I, I say, you know, can I 
force my neighbor to fund my child's education. No. So then why is property tax legitimate, you know, to, to fund public schools? Um, and they say, well, you're simplifying. You're oversimplifying. You're overgeneralizing. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but, you know, they, they always say, you don't understand it. Well, and, and then so then that kind of that kind of um, tells me, you know, they, they, they're they like, leave it up to the experts, leave it up to the economists, leave it up to the um, politicians. They know how to run things. Just yeah, I, sit back and relax. Watch your TV. I think too many Americans are too afraid to admit that maybe they've adopted too many uh, principles of communism without realizing it. And, and I think that they're so afraid to admit that. And they'd rather just bury their head in the sand and say, this is just how it's got to be. Then just man up, look in there and say, I've been supporting communism my whole life. Something that my grandfather probably died for or, or someone in my family had been fighting against their whole life. And they never think of that. They, it, it, you know, if you look up the 10 planks of the Communist Manifesto, the American government has every plank in, 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 in effect. But America is not a communist country. It's like communism for the poor people and fascism for the rich people. <laughs> That's why I call it a corpo or communo fascist state. It's a it's a hegemony of of both ideals intermixed. You have fascism for the top for the 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 the, the huge corporations that get these huge no bid tax subsidy uh, you know contracts. And then for the bottom, you have this this wealth redistribution for, you know, the, the people, you know, through housing projects, welfare, sta uh, you know, SNAP, all this other stuff. And it's we're going to plan capitalism at the top and we're going to keep people at the bottom. You know, communism's for the, the middle class and lower, the upper class and higher is fascism. We're going to ensure that you stay profitable. And that's not what America was built on. You know, there's – Stefan Molyneux did a really good speech on freedom and, and he said there's two types of freedom that people believe in. There's freedom from and freedom to. And too many Americans have adopted this freedom from. Too many people that, too many people that have bought into the communist pr principles and the communist ideas have bought into this freedom from idea, freedom from mistake, freedom from debt, freedom from – risk instead of freedom to make risk freedom to incur debt freedom to you know live freely and and they it, it creates horrible atrocities upon mankind and you know taxation is that hammer that people want to use to hedge against free that that freedom from so a lot of people they 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 feel good about making you pay those taxes or are saying, you know, you, I think you should pay those taxes. And they just don't – they will never see that that gun is also pointed to their head. It's like it's like 10 statists are standing in a circle all with a gun to each other's head saying pay your taxes. And they don't see the gun behind their head. You know, so it's <laughs> – the government has done a very good job of tricking – our governments have done a very good job of tricking people to believe that they're also not hanging themselves with the same noose that they're hanging their neighbors with. Well, yeah, but they also don't see that they're hanging <laughs> or they don't – not only do they not see the gun to the back of their head, they don't see the gun in their hand because they, they want to ignore that. But that, you know, you were saying how the governments, you know, do a good job of, of making them believe that. Well, yeah, that's where the, <clears throat> the, horiz the, <clears throat> the horizontal enforcement comes in where, you know, government in, – in almost every scenario, the government does not have enough – manpower to overpower its its citizens they rule based on fear fear of repercussions for you know violating some arbitrary edict and you know be, because if, if if everybody just stood up and said no they would lose all their power you know they may try to go down fighting but they'll be they'll be they'll be horribly outnumbered um, so, you know, government, all they have to do is get enough people to believe and 
people will be pointing that gun at their neighbor without realizing it by saying those words and they believe they're doing right. They believe, you know, they are on the, the, the moral path because they care about everybody, um, which is also why they're able to ignore communism. You know how you were talking about that. Uh, you know, they pretty much all 10 planks have started and been implemented. They're not fully, you know, in effect, but that's been going on for a long time. Um, but they don't, you know, like, like you said, too, the, the taxation powers at all, because without that, the, the government loses its power, um, you know, and if, if, you know, back to the earlier conversation, if they made it voluntary, yeah, only certain things would be funded um, and you'd still have problems because certain people would want some things and certain people want, wouldn't want other things and they wouldn't know how to handle it. Um, and in the government structure, and you know, it, we, you just you just end up right back where you started again, um, doing it that way. Um, people need to understand where this, you know, where this all starts with the authority, and they they need to make those connections where they can see that they actually do have a gun in their hand. Um, you know, nobody wants to think that. Nobody wants to think themselves as, as a violent individual. Um, but it's it's tough, you know. The, no, the, when you can subcontract violence, essentially, it, 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 you wash your hands of it, you know. Um, you know, you see it, but you're blocking it with your hand. That, that doesn't mean it's not still happening. You know, they... It, Hear no evil, see no evil. Yeah, it's cognitive dissonance at its finest. Now, I, I would contest one, one thing that you said, Jeremy. You, you said um, taxation, you know, it's like the foundation that powers the machine. I think, you know, I, you know, taxation and the belief in authority go hand in hand, right? But I think that the belief in authority is even more powerful of a force to um, subjugate the people. Because really, without the belief in authority, without the belief that, that the ruling class has legitimacy – it would not be viewed as the ruling class. It would not be viewed as a, you know, an authority. It would just be viewed as a mafia, right? A, 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 the biggest mafia in the in the land, and um, and their their which it threats. Is. Their th say again. Yeah, which, which it is. Which it is. Yeah, their threats uh, of punishment and violence would not be viewed as laws. They would be viewed as threats of violence, right? Their 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 um, you know threats of extortion would be viewed as as, as that, and rather than taxation. You know, there's all these political euphemisms that are always trying to honeycoat the um you know the underlying ugly you know underbelly of the political machine that nobody really wants to see because that that is ugly right that is not pleasant that's not and and maybe that's maybe that's the cause of why most people say you know two you know they say two topics not, not to be discussed at the dinner table right politics and religion <laughs> um but i would say or, <laughs> say again no, I was just going to say also, also in, I, I think it's not even the dinner table. I, I think the original phrase was just in polite company. In polite company, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. And, uh, and so and, and the other thing I wanted to say was, um, you know, some people say, well, taxes are good because we get something out of it, right? We get roads, we get the post office, we get, um, you, know, we feed, you know, welfare, you know, SNAP, we get all these supposed quote unquote benefits. Um, and what that is telling me is that, first of all, this person has um, a complete lack of creativity and imagination, and, and they believe that violence is necessary to bring about certain things. Like, we need to point guns at people, or else roads would not be built, right? Or else, you know, we would not help the needy or the sick or the elderly or the poor without violence in society. We need the violence, which is very, uh, you know, psychopathic way to view reality, you know. And, and again, when, when people use politics in terms of voting and supporting their, you know, elected representatives, they don't see it as violence, right? They just see it as, a, you know, a big community and, you know, you're supporting, you know, your, your representative. But, but um, it is violence because that's what, that's what gives it power, you know, is the belief in authority and the violence. That's why people feel the need to go along with it, you know, but it's very interesting, those relationship between taxation and the belief in authority, they're so intermingled, and that's where the power of public education, indoctrination, and propaganda, and revisionist history, you know, teaching, teaching the kids about um, <clears throat> skewed history 
in favor of you know whatever whatever nation they're being taught in you know if they're being taught in germany they're gonna they're gonna learn skewed german history right so, <laughs> it's whatever it is so what do you i mean think? Yeah, yeah there's there's a reason why they don't teach you know paying taxes in in, in government mandated schools i mean they want you to be completely they want you to be a complete idiot they want you to keep having to go to other people to pay you know to figure out these taxes and stuff and i think uh you know the more they can keep people in the dark on the whole thing i mean what is there there's 75,000 pages to the united states tax code mm -hmm. uh tw 12 font on regular size paper so i mean that's you know that's i mean <laughs> so i mean I, I i've got a picture of me holding up the the the, the uh, affordable health care act and it was it was this big of 12 font paper so, and, and that was only twenty two thousand or, or, or two thousand pages. So seventy five thousand, I can't imagine. Like that's unrealistically ridiculous, <laughs> you know. And um, it's government right now is a lot of people think uh, your your income tax, for instance. There's this myth, you know, it, it pays for stuff that it doesn't. Um, the entirety of the, uh, the 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 entirety of the United States population that pays income tax, the moment the government gets that, it's gone. It goes to pay the debt from last year. It goes not to the budget. Doesn't go to any bank or anything. It's not like the, the they're sitting on a pile of money. It just goes to pay the debt or the interest really on their debt. So on a fictional debt. <laughs> on the fictional debt, yeah, to the Federal Reserve, you know. Um, what was it the other day? Uh, you know, the the uh, China owns like one trillion dollars of American debt, but the Fed owns like nine, <laughs> uh, and the rest of their debt is unfunded liabilities to you know Medicaid, Medicare, Social Security, um, and you know all of our military expansionism. You know, like think of this. You know, like if Taxes are good, right? If, if you enjoy paying taxes. Could you imagine if before America went to war with Afghanistan or Iraq, let's just say Iraq, before the government said, we're going to invade Iraq, they went to everyone's house and said, hey, we're going to need you to sign this contract to pay $75,000 because that's it. Right now, that's where we're at with each American, even the most broke poor person and the rich person there. $75,000 in debt just for the Iraqi war. Do you think America would have went to war if everyone would have had to sign a contract to fund that? But war stimulates the economy though, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. That's the, uh, war is the health of the state because uh, under the precursor of war, the state can do whatever it wants. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like I've, I've often pondered, like if, if like, uh, let's say just some force outside of America came in and started attack, like broadcast a message and said, we're only going to attempt to shut down your government. W what would people do? Like, we're not going to kill innocent civilians. We're not going to do this or that. We're just going to shut down your government. What do you think people would do? Would people say, no, we have to rally behind these politicians, the ones that are uh, freaking us over so bad? You know that are they're robbing us blind. You know, putting the war on terror has now cost every American around one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars in debt. Like, and you pay that in taxes for them to to borrow more money from the Fed to fund more wars, to fund more welfare. To what end? I don't know. I mean, it seems to me that the Fed wants. A global currency by collapsing all the economies, but uh, I uh, I think the more people realize that taxation is a scourge upon mankind and won't have it anymore, they'll stand up for their brother. They'll say, "No, I'm not going to allow this entity to rob us blind," and they just will not comply with it. Well, to pay an army. To pay for enforcement, you have to have money. If the government collects no money, then it can't pay those people. You know, even though I read the other day that uh, there was a senator that came out that said we don't even need uh, another tax dollar from any American. At this point, we can just print up all the money we need. <laughs> so, 
if that's the truth, then why are we paying our taxes? What's the point in it? If they can just print up all the money they need to run the government, then what's the point? It's well, all about control. Well, yeah, because I was going to say the, the point. The point is perpetuating itself. That's the only. That's the only point there is. People don't see that all these horrible things that they're they're forcing others to do, um, and. You know, as uh, what you were saying about the the debt and everything. I mean, yes, we we know it to be pretty much imaginary at this point. Um, you know, because the the money is worthless. <laughs> um, but to the average person, they believe that the dollar still has some real value to it. Um, so they will cherish it to an extent, but then willingly um, give it over to government, you know, as you, as you, as you were saying too, Danilo, about how, you know, it just more and more of it goes, goes to these things. Um, and people don't even take it into consideration because they have to, you know, they, they take that good with the bad. They see the good things and say, oh, well, government has to do this. So we need to give them our money. Um, uh, but it's not as, you know, back to what you were saying, Dave, about the, you know, that it doesn't actually pay for anything. Well, at this point, of course not. I mean, just according to what the government puts out, you know, their own numbers, uh, it's what, 18 trillion now um, is, the, is what they claim the official debt is. And they, they don't take into consideration the unfunded liabilities, which the numbers on that I've seen range anywhere from uh, 90 trillion to 120 trillion. Um, I think the last actually, time I heard 200, 200, 200. I've seen numbers anywhere in that range from. from I think the yeah. official government recognized number is 68 trillion. Which is double the world's GDP for a year. I didn't, I didn't even think they they were recognizing it, but that. <laughs> um, I think that's their 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 like the the CBO's number. Oh, yeah. Um, well, that makes sense. Um, so still completely under undershooting what what even the most conservative estimate by anybody else was. Um, you know, so there's obviously no way with the amount of taxes they collect that they could put anywhere near a dent in that, you know, and that's, I mean, part of the problem is it, they're not supposed to, cause it, it can't, it's, it's a debt based system, you know, with the fiat money that they use. So if the only way to actually, the only way to remove the debt is to remove all the money in existence, they have to, you know, keep dropping currency until or if everyone just gives up on the currency. <laughs> Well, or if, yeah, or if it collapses, you know, and that ties into something else you were saying about if, if everybody just stopped paying, you know, I, I, that was one of the tweets I put out on tax day, you know, if 10 million just decided not to pay one year, what would happen? There's no way the money they missed. Well, no, but I mean, what would happen to those people? not many of them would, would see anything happen because they can't possibly prosecute a, prosecute us all. Um, well, I, I, read a, I, re I read something the other day or, or heard something the other day somewhere that 80% of all IRS employees are over 50 and, and everyone they try to get in that is under that, they just won't take the job. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what they're going to do to convince people to take that job, but they're going to have a real crisis pretty soon. With people retiring, uh, I I don't know. I mean, it, it may be in the short term, but all they'll do is come up with some great perk. No, package I think that's. Yeah, you no, know, well, no, I, I get that because. But what I'm saying is, it just speaks wonders to our generation that they don't want to be part of that evil. It's a job for your golden years. What are you talking about? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they may have had a retirement. No, no, they, at they, one point they, they, most of these. Most of these uh, IRS employees are employees for life. Like they've been employees for 30, 40 years. Okay. So uh, it, it's, it's a shocking thing that I, I heard. I was like, wonder what bull crap story the, the government's going to have to crop up to get actual IRS employees. Well, that's what I'm saying. They're, they're not going to have to. They're not footing the bill. So they'll just they'll they'll improve the perk packages until people are willing to take the job again. You know, that's not really a problem. There's always going to be people that are quite willing to run to government for a job. Um, you just have to put the right package together. And when you have unlimited funds um, and they're not yours to begin with, you can you know, offer whatever you want because um, other people will be footing the bill generations ahead if the system isn't stopped. You know, what I was trying to st starting to say before rather uh, about, you know, people just not paying, you know, that's all it would take is, is that many people just to stop. 
Um, and this is, this is, they would have a hard time even, pro even coming close to prosecuting like a quarter of those people. Um, but that ties back into the belief in authority. That's the only reason it's there. If people just said, well, you know what? I don't, I don't agree with these, some of these things you're doing. So no, I don't think I should have to pay for them. Um, you know, they, they would have to scramble even harder to find a way to, you know, sh would they start printing money? Yeah, they probably would, but it's, that's just going to call it hyperinflation is always just around the corner. Um, you know, no matter how many times the Keynesians want to say that it's just, uh, you know, doomsday talk by, by the Austrians. Um, it's the threat of it is always there because <clears throat> they have complete control of the money. You know, whether people want to believe that the Federal Reserve is, is a completely private entity or not, it's, it's absolutely not. There's no way it can be because um, they work hand in hand with the government. Um, so they can they all it takes is, is for them to start printing to the point where everything loses value and you have the Weimar Republic all over again. Um, you know, you, you, you should be able to convince conservatives on this. You should be able to sell you know, the fiscally conservative liberals on this, just, you know, without even getting to the theft argument. If there's things you don't agree with, you shouldn't have to pay for them. It shouldn't work that way, you know? Just don't pay for a year, see what happens, you know? And one of two things, mo the most likely thing that will occur is everything will continue as normal for a while, and maybe then they'll see, hey, wait a minute, there is no contributions and everything's still going right along. Maybe they'll start looking deeper into the money system at that point. You know, it's just, it's, it's that the, the hardcore ones are, are you, you're almost never going to reach that believe that it's, you know, it, it is your civic duty and, and we have to pay these things and, and there's no way it could be theft, you know, but there's so many other people out there that disagree um, with one aspect or another. And, uh, you know, you, you mentioned Ted Cruz before, you know, like that's just a joke. Any politician who claims you're going to shut the IRS, they're, they're never going to because they, they can't, as you said, it's tied to everything. And that also touches on what you said earlier, Danilo. Um, I, I, I actually believe that, the, as you said, that the belief in authority is, is the overpowering force. Um, when I said the taxation power is the machine, I meant the actual physical machines. <laughs> uh, that's, that's how they get their money. Um, um. So one of my favorite quotes, uh, I forget who said it, um, he says, uh, the level of taxation in the society is um, the, the measurement of, of, a, of a basic civilization. So, so, you know, complete taxation would be totalitarianism or, or, or complete enslavement would be the complete uh, deterioration of civilization and no taxation would be a free and voluntary society would be considered a success. Um, and, and also, uh, I, I you know, I kind of find it funny when uh, when government employees or government workers tell me, um, you know, I pay my taxes. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, like, we can we can we can do a whole hour on why <laughs> government employees don't pay taxes, and then and a government employee broke this down for me the other day, and it made a lot of sense, and I had never really thought about it like that. Uh, not to steal your point here, but uh, he said, um. They, you know, they inflate government employees, um, you know, what they get paid and then tax them on it to make it seem normal. And then they use that other tax money for stuff that they really want to or to get, give other more government jobs. <laughs> so it, it's, it's like the I saw a meme of, uh, you know, those, um, you know, those power cables where it has, you know, multiple outlets in it. You plug it into the wall. It's like it's like this is a government employee paying taxes is the power cable plugged into itself <laughs> all right it does yeah, not it's a, contribute it's a, it's snake anything. eating its own tail yeah yeah it, it's it, it's like it's completely counterproductive um to society and and it means nothing you know because <laughs> like you, you got to tell these people your salary is funded by taxation what the hell are you talking about you pay taxes that, that's it's completely illogical <laughs> it's not like you know your job is not even considered a job because it was not created out of market demand right because if it was if it, if it was able to be created at market demand the guns would not be necessary to force people to create it or to force people to pay you because people would want to voluntarily pay you right i mean teachers you know in public schools you, you know you can say that they they have the ability or they have the skills 
that can be um, trans, um, how you say, uh, transferred, to, to, transferred to a voluntary society. They can teach, right? But other people like tax, you know, tax agents or IRS agents, they, well, what skill do they have? They, they're thieves, you know, that's, all, that's the only skill they know. They're con artists or what, you know, like, um, so, so some people, some people do have sort of, sort of, uh, valuable skills, but, um, yeah, that's what I tell police officers. Like without government, you would have a job because people want safety. I mean, if you, I mean, you believe you're protecting people, but you know, then that, that those security agencies would drop, uh, pop up and they would need people to do that. So majority of police officers, it would just be your now you're paid through voluntary means. But I assume like they would have to be deprogrammed first, like like you know. Oh yeah, it's not, huge... it's not shoot first and ask questions later. All right, <laughs> you're yeah, not yeah, a yeah, police yeah. officer anymore. <laughs> yeah, you will get fired if you fuck up. <laughs> Dogs um, are no. not meant to be dead. Okay, dogs are okay. Keep them alive. So I want to ask you guys three questions. You're putting Jeremy out of business. Come on. <laughs> I want I want to ask Jeremy and Danilo, yes or no questions. Three of them. All right. <laughs> Would you consider a society that has the largest prison population in the world civilized? No. Those violent, those violent, non, non-violent drug offenders <laughs> harming themselves, harming society. <laughs> yeah, yes not. or no? <laughs> of course. Okay, all right. <laughs> Would you consider a society where m- people who organize mass murders to the tunes of millions get Salaries paid by society and are lauded over like lords and kings, a civilized society. Dave, you're oversimplifying it. It's called war. It's not called mass murder. All right. Get- <laughs> okay. Uh, my, my, my bad. My bad. Go- yes or no? No. No. Would you consider a society that has flying robotic machines that blow people up and their property – and a 10% success rate on the desired target, 80% casualty rate, a civilized society. No. Of course. Isn't that so sad, though? Drones are not inherently machines, evil machines. Like, like they, can be, they can do beautiful things, you know, like deliver packages, deliver food. Instead, they're oh, like, no, 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 I know, I know me. these things. I'm just saying, maybe we should go into that. That's, that's a fascinating topic. Because- so, so my last question, the, the, this, this tacked on question, because you all answered correctly, then are taxes <laughs> what we pay for a civilized society? Exactly. No. Yeah. Well, no, I, I, I say that all the time. You know, most people will say. I just wanted to completely shit all over that statement. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, because that's the thing. People say taxes are, are the price we pay for a civilized society. No, it's the, it's the opposite. It's, it's the reason, uh, you know, you, you're convinced you need to pay them because it's not civilized. You know, there's violence all around you, whether you want to recognize it or not. There's always a gun being pointed at somebody to get them to do what others you know, with the uh, with the will of the others is, you know, which is that consent issue, which people think that you know you you gave implied consent at some point, um, you know, or they or they think they can apply it for others, as Dave said earlier. Um, people don't know what that word means. People don't understand it. It's it's become part of political rhetoric, um, and it's the consent of the government, man. We the people. <laughs> yeah, consent, consent, consent of the governed. You, you, you consented to. You consented by staying here. You know that type of stuff. Yeah, you don't really understand what consent means. Um, it's it's a violation if I if I don't agree with it and I you know to force me to leave or tell me I have to leave or or stay and take it. Um, that is not a tr- that is a false choice. That is not. You know that it, that's you know the same thing with with following the laws. It, you don't have a choice. No, you either. Um, you know, you, you, you either obey or eventually you'll die. Um, you know, that's not a choice. That's not a choice. It's, you know, you can claim it as a choice. It's a false choice. It's not a choice. Um, I saw something the other day, uh, to, to add to your point, you know, uh, about consent, you know, it was like, uh, the difference between voluntary and taxation. And it was a guy, he was walking past and it said bakery on this, on the, on the window and it, and the guy goes, hey, do you want to buy a piece of bread for a dollar or a loaf of bread for a dollar? The guy whips out his billfold and says, yes, here's a dollar. Thank you for the bread. 
And then it was like taxation. And it shows the guy walking by, the baker's behind him, and he grabs him around the neck. He's like, here's your, your loaf of bread while he's pulling your wallet out of the back of your pocket. To and make to it, make the analogy more accurate, it should be a stale, old, hard loaf of bread. And, yeah, and then he yeah, steals exactly. the wallet and, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and gives him back so, a couple of pennies. That's it. <laughs> so the, the point is, is just because you get shit that you could use or you get stuff back that you deem uh, useful or, or any way like uh, ne- necessary doesn't mean that taxation is good. There's still – you know, it's like the slavery. Who will pick the cotton? You know, uh, I don't know who's going to pick the cotton, but we know slavery is bad. I don't know who's going to build the roads, but I know slavery or taxation is bad. I don't know who's going to drone bone, uh, drone, drone bomb Kenyans, but I know taxation is bad. <laughs> All right? So we could just end it there. Let's not get into the semantical, imaginary fantasy land of what could happen if that. In your utopian anarchist paradise, <laughs> how would blank? <laughs> yeah, it's like... Well, that, that, yeah. big, that big book that says, you know, what will happen if... What will happen? <laughs> um, yeah. the... No, no, I was going to say that that's a great, that's a great um, analogy, you know, who will pick the cotton. I talk about that a lot. You know, I tell people that, uh, you know, we're talking about, you know, how voluntarists are also abolitionists, you know, because the modern-day abolitionists. And that the abolitionists of the, of the 19th century did not oppose slavery because they were fortune tellers or oracles or could foresee the rise of industrial machines picking, you know, and tilling the soil, uh, picking the, uh, you know, the crops. They did it on moral grounds alone. That was enough. Like, it's just immoral to own other human beings. You don't need to be a fortune teller to be against that. (laughs) Yeah, and just because I only work for the government 50, 45 percent of the year, even if it's one percent of the year, does not mean that I'm not one percent. Like at what point, at what percentage of me being robbed does it not constitute slave slavery? Yeah, that's a good question. And, you know, <laughs> and that's you know that's I tell people a lot of times, and they just they get mad, huffy puffy, and <clears throat> I don't think they realize the definitions. That, like you were saying at the beginning of this episode, Danilo, the definitions are clear. But I truly believe that taxation is slavery. P- some people call it theft. S- theft slavery is theft. Yeah, you're not uh, you're not shackled to a chain, and you're not sleeping in some mud hut or whatever that you had to build, and uh, you know, uh, yeah, you get to go watch your movies on Friday, or, or or you get to go drink beers with your friends and stuff. But half your life, half your your year goes to paying for the people who are bombing other countries and giving the money to companies that don't deserve it, and helping keep lies afloat and boondoggles afloat. And this is all anti-human. You know what I'm saying, Jeremy? Yeah. Um, people, uh, you know, they, they, they accept these things um, and they don't, they, they don't want to, they don't want to, they don't want to see that all these bad things are happening because of them. Um, they, they, they just, they, they just want, they they want to try to ref, reform it from the inside and hope some of the bad things go away, um, but they're always you know the the cycle will continue like you said if if they keep paying it if they if they keep paying in it's just going to keep happening you can't stop that you know they and and people you know even if they don't want to think of the robbery argument most people don't even realize how much is taken out you know between the all levels of taxation it is the average person does pay 50 percent and you know that can be considered a form of slavery because half of half of your time and effort has been taken from you whether you agree with it or not um you know and if it's if it's if it's slavery because it's against your consent well if you consent that's that's on you every it's still slavery for everybody else who doesn't consent um because like they that lemonade that that crystal light like slavery light <laughs> <laughs> yeah people don't well, people don't want to you people don't like when we use the analogy because they automatically have their mind go back to chain slavery um which was obviously horrific um, and hopefully the world will never see that on that type of scale again ever. Um, but it's, you know, they, again, that goes back to what I said earlier about people, you know, even the theft argument, people think it, they want to be, 
they think we're being hyperbolic by saying these things and, and just trying to get a response out of them or, or trying to demonize what they believe to be good. Um, but it's, it, it's not, you know, it, like you said, you know, Danilo, you started off with the definitions and stuff. It, to me, I, I always equate it to, you know, it, it's newspeak. That's what it is. New, newspeak is alive and well. You know, all they have, all, all government has done is taken words um, and, and given new meanings and the euphemisms are supposed to be something completely different, you know, because um, when you do break it down to the small level, you know, like I said earlier with the, with the, like, with the little neighborhood example, you know, if, if it would be theft for, for you to take from your neighbor um, who didn't want to uh, be part of your little system, um, then it's theft for anybody else. Um, so they are, you know, they're, they're, st they're, they're stealing from you. <laughs> <laughs> Whether you want to believe it or not, um, it's not. Uh, it, it's not. Um, it's not. It's. It's really hard to debate that. Um, but people, you know, they don't want to see it because they they believe in the newspeak. So, you know, taxation becomes theft. Um, you know, Dave, you said mass murder becomes war. Um, you know, you know the the line from from 1984, of course, was war is peace. Um, you know, which which is funny because most people who will even status who read that will can understand that on some level how ridiculous that sounds but when somebody like ronald reagan um or now i'm sure ted cruz will pick it up too because i think you know he seems he seems to be mo he seems to be modeling himself after reagan um peace through strength um <laughs> same same exact thing reversed order um, but they don't, you know, they don't want to see that because they, they, they've been blinded by the rhetoric. Um, you know, the same thing with, um, conscription, um, conscription was essentially slavery. Um, you know, you, you were forced to, to be a part of the, of the military, whether you liked to or not, you know, whether you liked to or not, you know, when the draft happened, that was, that, that was a form of slavery. You know, most people did it willingly, um, because they thought they were doing right for their country. Um, but it's, it's, it's well, there. Yeah. It's hard when like a conscription was in place. Like if you dodged the draft or, or you know, spoke out publicly, no one was going to give you a job, you know, no one was <laughs> like, you were basically kicked out of society and that's that pack mentality, you know? Well, that, that, yeah, that, that's that, that's that blind nationalism where, you know, people don't think about. Oh, you're, you know, if, you know, if you're breaking the law or you're not willing to stand up for your country, you know, even though nobody's been fighting for our country for a very long time, <laughs> they're, they're, you know, they're fighting for the, for the politicians and the bankers. Uh, and, you know, they haven't not been. Not since no, the Revolutionary War have we fought for this country. Um, well, I guess, I mean, technically, the War of 1812, uh, we sort of did. Uh, well, we, not we. Um, <laughs> the, the government the government at that time sort of did. Um, Davy Crockett? There can be, a, well, there, there also could be a, a case made for the, uh, the war, war of Northern Aggression that we spoke about with Jim Limber Davis last week, that, uh, you know, that was actually the last fight for American freedom because mm -hmm. the Southerners were literally just trying to walk away so they were fighting for their freedom well, they were trying to exert <laughs> they were trying to exert the intention of the constitution which is if a government becomes too tyrannical you can pull away a lot yes. of people think that that war is about slavery which is not which we could do a whole episode on the civil war but i wanted to move on to something that is a lot of that is really confused in a lot of statist heads and i want danilo to see what he has to say about this but it's just two words it's corporate taxes. Corporate taxes. <clears throat> well, I mean, given the fact that corporations are themselves a machination of the state, um, and I mean, people, I mean, people, I think, are vilifying corporations alone. You know, they they see like you know Monsanto producing GMOs and you know buying up all of seeds, and then you see like Chevron, you know, polluting Amazon rainforests and you know destroying indigenous villages, and so it's kind of um, it's kind of uh, how you say um, acceptable to you know go after the corporations and you know you know we are the ninety nine percent right the occupiers. Um, so it, it, it's <laughs> but but people have to understand 
what what the root cause is and, and, and what gives these corporations power. And you know, although although the corporations are still they're still more or less um, how you say funded by the people because we're not forced to buy GMOs, right? We're not forced to buy their products. Um, but nevertheless, their power and their sovereign immunity is obtained through legislation, right? Through many, um, many bills that are passed um, that are basically written by them <laughs> and then regulated by them. <laughs> so, well, yeah, so taxing the, corp- taxing the corporation would, would, would achieve absolutely nothing. But, but actually, I, w- I wanted to make one more one point um, that's kind of interesting in the, in, the, in the taxation argument is, you know, it, it, let's say, you know, you're talking to somebody and you break the legs of all of these, um, all these arguments and then, they, and, then, and then they come back with the appeal to pity, logical fallacy. You know, they say, well, what about the person who just, you know, down in their luck, they can't find a job. Don't you think it's your duty to support them? <laughs> Don't you think you... You just have a moral obligation to help your fellow man. <laughs> was 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 I involved in the procreation of this said individual? Yeah, yeah. So so attempting to use emotion to uh, to sway you and and basically calling most people most volunteers. Uh, basically, you know, you're just selfish. You just think about yourself. You don't think about society. You know what's good for the, you know, the greater good. Which I like to point out every time people say that, um, you know, that, that was the same argument used by Hitler. <laughs> people don't like to realize that the greater either. good of Germany. Yeah, <laughs> it was for the greater good. He said the whole world will be in peace when Germany is the only country. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, well, ahead. that's part of the that's part of the whole newspeak thing, where these these terms have been used over and over and over again. They just they ch- they change them, they update them with the times, to uh, you know whatever the common parlance is at the at the you know wherever they are, they will they will craft the words, but they all have the same meaning. Um, but people people don't see it because they are you know it. To, to, get, to hit on the school discussion, you know, they're indoctrinated to think that certain people are bad, our country's good. Uh, you know, Dave, I think you said it earlier in the show that they, they you know, the other countries learn the same thing um, that, you know, about their country. They're, they're taught that they're good and everybody else is bad. Yeah, so um, the same argument I use against religions, like, how can your God be good and theirs be bad when they believe yeah. the same thing? Yeah. Our God is good and your God is bad. Like, it doesn't... <laughs> Yeah, it's it's exactly it's it's all it's all it's all rhetoric and smoke and mirrors and and people are easily mystified by that. It's funny the p- people who think government are necessary because people are bad still don't want to think ill of their their fellow man as it comes to like politicians and stuff because they don't want to think they have these bad intentions. They want to think that you know they wouldn't tell they wouldn't lie to them and they are. Um, we we are we are exceptional. We are different. We are better, you know. And every country, all, all the citizens American of every country think that. <laughs> I, oh, I hate that line. It's so ridiculous. Like why? I I ask people straight out, why Sean are we exceptional? Sean Hannity, man, you just got you got to go listen. You got to well, go listen to the Seanster, well, man. He knows it. Well, why why are you why are you why are you exceptional? Um, you know, and they can never really answer that without you know some horrible mental gymnastics uh to try to get <laughs> well because america is the home of the free and the land of the brave man and you know we're the greatest nation on earth and you just need to show a little respect man hoorah yeah. uh, we had chris kyle damn it he killed 300 <laughs> something people for your freedoms god damn it <laughs> no but my point about corporate taxes that you completely missed is oh uh, corporations do not pay taxes all taxes on corporations is passed on to the consumer every oh. every Every tax, like if if I sell vaporizers at my store, if, let's say I make these and I sell them for $100, right? And the government goes, hey, we need to put a 10% tax on there. I'm not eating 10% in profit. I'm This thing's going to be $110 now. I'm not paying one red cent in taxes. So everything that the government does to con- try to control corporations is a farce. It's so they can get more money. The government can get more money through those voluntary interactions that the, the corporations get. Somewhat voluntary. Some of them receive huge amounts of subsidies that keep them in business. We shut out competition. You know, that's, it's a cycle. It's like, okay, so <clears throat> the huge corporations get taxed, taxed their face off and the smaller corporations can't pay it. And then the bigger corporations get subsidies from the government to help pay for those taxes. So, so they put everyone out of business and create that fascistic 
model for these people to ensure profits, you know. Um, you know, if you listen to some of Tom Wood's stuff about the um, <sighs> about the railroads and, and, and all these huge factory makers, uh, you know, that wanted to eliminate or price control, like all the cartels that were made for certain industries about how they – they wanted to use government force to shut down corporations that wouldn't apply to the car, uh, cartel's rules. And that's just another form of fascism. Like if, if you're – fascism, when I say that, I mean government interjection in the marketplace, even if it's just a little, even if it's just one thing. You know, like – so <laughs> the government the, – the constitution, people get mad at me when I call the constitution a fascist document. Well – for instance, it, in the Constitution, in uh, I believe it's Article 1, Section 8, says that they can keep and maintain a well-regulated Navy, I think, or something. That is creating an artificial demand in the marketplace of uh, aqua defense or, or coastal defense. <laughs> so you're, you're already creating a fascist facet of the economy through in a monopoly – on the Navy, on who can protect what state. And uh, so a lot of people don't look at things like that. But, you know, corporations do not pay taxes. They either get taxed so high that they have to make their, their prices so high that either the government has to give them a subsidy or they go out of business. Or they just raise their prices to pay that tax. So their profits never change. You know, you look at the gas tax. Exxon and Chevron and all these other big gasoline companies make – Record profit year after year after year after year, and the taxes on them keep going up year after year after year. How does that happen then? That just proves exactly what I said to be true, 100% to be true. So you were saying something to the accord of how it's they use taxes to control society a little bit. Yeah, people tend to think that um, you know if there's a problem in society, just tax the rich. Right, <laughs> that's the common theme, um, and um, and that's kind of uh, it, it's it's pretty uh, you know as you were saying communist in in nature you know it's like we must we we cannot be unequal in freedom right we must be equal in slavery. <laughs> of course, the rulers except the rulers, but everyone else <laughs> equal in slavery, <laughs> which is which is really uh, which is really quite sad you know because. People expect, you know, they, they they think that like everybody, um, you know, contributes the same. So nobody should have nobody should have more, right? Like so so what if you know in your in your communist this you know forced fascistic communist society if if uh, if somebody works hard then then someone who didn't work at all is entitled to the fruits of their labor, right? Um, which is pretty sick and perverted. Um, <laughs> and contrary to reality, like like what is the incentive for somebody to work hard if they know that their their uh, you know their profits and their and their products will be confiscated at a whim by people who are just parasites on society? Yeah. What do you think? What do you think, Jeremy? Yeah, it, well, they 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 think they want to you know pa pass it off on others. That's that's the theme. It's always you know somebody else will do it and we should do it and we. You know, and and you should take from the from from the from the more you know the the more wealthy among us. Um, but as you know, Dave was saying with the the corporate taxes, uh, you know that that is the point. They don't they don't have to pay, so you can tax them all you want, and it doesn't hurt them. Um, you know, and even the ones that it might hurt, they get the favor they get the favorable regulations and the tax loopholes because you know that's you you started to say that too, Dave. That that's that's how the the, the scheme works. You know, all the regulations, um, even the even just the tax regulations, they're set, they're always set at at the level that it's just enough for the pref the preferred corporations to bear it in one form or another, whether it's passing it off a little at the time to their customers or paying what they need to because they're going to get subsidies down the road. Um, you know, it's just enough for them to tolerate it, but it's just too much for the smaller companies to even think of contending and they eventually fold. And that's how you, you know, how we get to Dave's favorite word, fascism, <laughs> where <laughs> the word, where the, where they, where they I'm just trying this. to drill it into people's heads so no, they realize I, I, exactly I, what 
Yeah, I actually, they they I, don't realize that that's what's going on. I actually wasn't picking on you that time, Dave. <laughs> I know you're serious. not picking on me. I'm just trying to explain uh, myself a little bit. I normally am. Um, that time I wasn't. Normally, yeah. um, but, uh, <laughs> but that's how they get to that point. But the, the thing is, you know, we started to touch on it a little earlier, and I, I think the, one of the bigger problems surrounding taxation is, you know, obviously the belief in authority, because without that it goes away. But the problem is people can't think beyond what they have now. And they, you know, we started to touch on this a little bit, all of us did, how people, uh, the average person can't even begin to conceive how these things would be, you know, whatever services they particularly care for. Like they can't possibly fathom how they would be produced without government taxing people, without people, you know, you know, like we said, just, they I'll don't give you an see an example real quick. Google Fiber just announced that they were going to an area, and in that area, Time Warner upped the uh, their service capabilities eight times the amount that they were previously giving, just from them announcing that they might bring Google Fiber into the area. <laughs> so that just goes to show you what competition in a soft monopolized industry could do. Well, yeah, and people... You know, that's, I mean, we, we've touched on the monopolies before in, in other episodes, and it, it's true. People don't, their, their reasoning usually for wanting the government to control these things, the government to provide these things, which of course is a joke because the government doesn't actually provide anything. You know, when you, when, you ste when you steal the means first and then hand those means over to subcontractors <laughs> to do the work, you're not actually doing anything. You're just the most expensive and most of the time incompetent middleman the world has ever known um you know but people don't want to think about how it could be done um they think government has to because they're afraid of the monopoly the horrible monopolies popping up you know that's what will happen if you you know if if there's pri if you privatize everything somebody will take the market completely missing the point that that's what you have now when you have the government dealing with these specific things, whether it be national defense, whether it be the money, what, you know, whatever it is, you know, now healthcare, um, whatever government controls even mostly, um, you know, it's a monopoly <laughs> and, and, but people are afraid of monopolies and, you know, you started to touch on competition and, that, and that's the thing. People will see competition in any other, um, avenue and think it's a good thing. You know, I'm sure the people, uh, in that area with with the with Google's announcement are excited that they're now getting better service <laughs> um, just because of an announcement because there's competition you know we you know I think Dave you, you've used the ice cream um, shop analogy before where it's you know how many ice cream shops do you have in your town and isn't it better um, to have more um, you know if you only have one and it sucks well then you're out of luck. <laughs> and that's the problem. People, you know, they, they think that we need government for all these things. They think we need to be I, taxed. I, mean, <clears throat> I, I just, I mean, anybody listening to this, I have an open challenge. If you can point to me one monopoly that exists or has existed in the history of man without government intervention in any way, I will send you a t-shirt when we finally get them for free. <laughs> Oh, I will mail you. I will buy one for you. Dave's first challenge. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's open yeah. challenge. And I'm not talking about a small market where like out in some – I'm talking about a huge monopoly, standard oil type. And if you say standard oil was created without government force, you really need to go back and read some things. No, that's the problem. That's the problem is that people will refer back to their government history <laughs> from that they received in government school. And they're going to say, well, chain slavery was from private – private people you know the you know look at what happened with rockefeller and you know st you know standard Oil most and, slave and, and laws the trust. were enforced by government exactly you know that, but the people don't realize that you know they because that's what they received from their government schooling so like you actually had to register your slaves with the state <laughs> like a lot of people don't realize that <laughs> and the it wasn't just like and uh, the bounty hunters the state, and <laughs> yeah it wasn't like the state was like hey they got slaves over there on that 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 plantation we don't really know or care about it no the government was just as oppressive then they were like how many slaves you got what's their names how many you got what you know if one of them has a baby we want to know about it you know it's like yeah <laughs> yeah yeah but, um, but yeah no no to to Sorry, I cut you off there, Jeremy. But you know, you're going on about monopolies, and and I just love going on and on. <laughs> no, 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 no. You were going on about monopolies, and I just love to tell people that monopolies cannot exist without some facet of government getting involved. 
I mean, just Standard Oil, for example. So just in case anybody goes and says Standard Oil, Standard Oil not only used copyright and IP laws that are enforced by government, they also used regulations and zoning laws enforced by their local and state and federal governments. They also used the government to enforce no competition in their areas. So <laughs> there's no way they uh, uh, achieved that monopoly status without the violence of government. But also, everyone thinks that their monopoly was evil, but the price of kerosene, which was their major product, did this the whole time they were a monopoly. <sighs> Down. So it was just government trying to assert itself into the market. I mean, companies are going to go and they're going to come and they're going to die and they're going to succeed and they're going to... So you broke up Standard Oil with government. You let Rockefeller, John D. Rockefeller, have... 30% of each company that they broke it into, and then he became richer. Yay, he broke up his monopoly. Woo! You just created well, three it, more tax cows. It, you know, talking about competition, um, it's, it's funny when people, um, they tell me, well, if you just if you just let the market go free, what you're eventually going to happen is, it, is have one business that's going to swell to gigantic proportions and by by undercutting everyone else, charging rock bottom prices, and you know who can resist that? And then once they have control, they're going to hike up the prices and shaft everyone else. And so basically, and so basically, they're saying there's there's three different types of uh, of ways that you can deceive the customer, right? Through pricing, you can either undercut them, right? Charge <laughs> charge next to nothing, which is it seems to be a benefit, but I don't know. In some people's twisted socialist world that's an evil and then in the second one is like collusion which is like equal to everyone where companies collude okay everything is equal and then you have um price gouging which is which is jacking it up usually in, in emergency situations but it seems to me they're all crimes but i'm like wait a minute that's just that's just price the price mechanism adapting to various situations like since when did that become a crime so competition it seems in many people's minds is a crime yeah. which is very strange like that, that I, I, horrible I, I, idea of of <laughs> the government or uh, a monopoly becoming and then taking over one thing and then undercutting everybody so they put them out of business and then they jack the prices way up has never happened in the entirety of the humanity and the, and the other thing is like are you saying you want higher prices is that what you're telling me like you don't want low price like when you go to the store do you say uh, okay, which one is the most expensive and least efficient product here? Let me <laughs> let me buy that one. Like, what are you saying? You know, people don't know what they're saying. Um, it's and, and talking about the um, you know, the ice cream shop and everything. It's like people want variety in you know their cell phones, in their laptops, in their cars, and ice cream. Right? They want variety because that that's what they know. Right? But they don't want variety in courts or or police, you know, or defense agencies, um, or, you know, currencies, alternative currencies, because they don't know that, because they've never experienced it. So that would be the, you know, appeal to antiquity, right? It has always been that way, and it must always be this way. They can't imagine a world different than that, and that genuinely frightens many people. And, and that's, and going back to, you know, what Jeremy was saying, statism is rooted in fear, fear of the unknown, fear of what your neighbor might do to you, you know, fear of, you know, pre-crime or thought crime or <laughs> what might happen. <laughs> so we have to enslave each other in the present day with all these, um, you know, uh, you know, 75,000 tax code, you know, page tax code and, you know, immense laws and regulations. So. So so all right. So why don't we give our final remarks, uh, uh, Jeremy? What, what do you what do you want to say to people about taxation? Uh, if somebody came well, up to you? well, like I said earlier, you, you know, try try to think of it in, in different in different terms. Try try to think about if it's you know if your neighbor was doing the same exact thing, would you think it's okay? You know, if if it's if it is, well, then you have no problem. 
Um, and if that is the case, then if you don't mind, give me your address and I'll be yeah, glad to pick up exactly. <laughs> uh, a portion of your stuff because you know you don't you don't seem to have a problem with that. And, and most people will automatically balk at that and say, no, well, no, of course not. Well, no, if if you're gonna if we're gonna apply logic consistently and we use the logic um, that you the logical path you were trying to go down, then that's the same thing. If you don't have a problem with it, um, please refer you know. to the Tar Larkin Rose. I have the right to rob you video. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, that, that, that's a good one for this. Um, you know, but if, if you don't believe that your neighbor has that right or you have that right, then where does government get that right? You know, try, try to try to ask yourself, where where does that right come from? Just because it's written down on a piece of paper? You know, no. Well, if 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 they if you have if you don't have a right to do something, then you can't give that right to somebody else which means the people, you know, the, the founders who are always deified um, by the average statist uh, will, you know, they made a decision for everybody and they never actually got consent. Um, so, you know, they just, they wrote it down on a piece of paper. Congress has the authority to tax. Where did they get that authority? If you didn't have that, if you don't have that right or authority, and they didn't have that right or authority as an individual, then where did they get it to, to put that, you know, to give it, you know, uh, to, to give it to themselves so they could take this money? You know, when you think of it in those terms, it's really hard to deny that you are being robbed when, when you are required to pay taxes, um, you know, because if it was voluntary, as some people try to claim, um, one of my favorite videos from like, I don't know, eight, 10 years ago was Harry Reid getting, getting caught on uh, some, uh, you know, local, uh, it was before podcasts, it was like a local video show or something. And the guy caught him and got him to, got him to say that, you know, taxes were voluntary. And then he That's, got all that, mad. That was Jan Helfeld. Oh, was it Jan? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, he, he got caught. He got caught like a deer in headlights, and it's like, <laughs> well, no, of course it's not. So if it's compulsory, it's not. It's which is the it's the opposite of voluntary, and you don't have a choice. You either pay or you will eventually meet your demise if you follow it to its logical conclusions. That in any other scenario you most people would consider theft and like i said if you don't if you wouldn't consider that theft then we have a whole nother set of issues to talk to you about <laughs> um but it, it you know it it try to look at it from these angles and and ask yourself you know and also uh, the most important question I, for people to ask themselves is would you pay if you didn't have that force would you pay for all these things and if if your first objection is well government has to do these things because no one else will or you know you're afraid of monopolies or you know whatever it is the next question you should ask yourself is how well is it really being done now whatever the service is how efficient is it how much you know go look at the numbers how much do they what what is the budget of the individual agency that is that you prefer to have around like you know what are they spending how much is being poured into that is it you know is it in any way efficient if it's not and i'll assure you now that you won't find a single one that's being run efficiently <laughs> why are you so afraid of something different you know it, it comes down to that the devil you know versus the devil you know i actually i said it in reverse the other day where it's you know people fear People fear the devil they've only heard about versus, uh, you know, fearing the devil that's actually pulling the, you know, stoking the, f the flames of that fear, um, you know, because you, you know, you, you fear the unknown. You fear what would happen without these things, you know, from, from the military to, to, to the roads, um, to all this stuff. It, it will get, it, it will, any problem that needs to be taken care of, the market will handle. You know, that, that's how it works. That's how the process works. You know, there's a demand, it will be filled. Um, you know, and, you know, anytime you, you bring up objections, question those objections a little before, more before you throw them out. Because if, if you say to, at any point you're afraid of monopolies, realize who's in charge of it now. The largest monopoly in the, the world. <laughs> you know, so that's pretty much it. Yeah. Uh, my closing statement would be, to everyone that's listening to this and still believes taxation is necessary, um, I want you to, since it is tax time or just over, you're probably familiar with with how much you paid. I want you to look at that 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 large that, that large sum on your income tax, 
And I want you to find someone else that took that much from you this year or in any year past or in any year past combined. So <laughs> when's the last time a random stranger stole $20,000 from you? When's the last time Kmart stole $10,000 from you? When's the last time a mugger walked up and, yeah, he took your watch, but that's still a drop in the bucket when you look at your total assets compared to what the government took. So at the end of the year, you look at who stole from you the most, and you can argue, and which you will, that, yeah, I get stuff from the government. I don't agree with everything they say or do, but I get stuff. But, like, if you were paying for a water company and you found out that water company – a privately owned water company was bombing people or uh, in, you know, <clears throat> uh, pretending to be the a legitimate m m mafia somewhere, you would, you would pull away and you would say, I'm not buying from that company anymore. You can't do that with government. So please, just think of that. Please unsubscribe. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, if, if you can't treat everything just like Netflix – where you go in there, you go, I don't like what Netflix is doing. Unsubscribe. <laughs> if Netflix you know, sent a drone to your house and blew your house up because you unsubscribed, they would go out of business tomorrow. The government essentially does the same thing, and you can't. So just think of that. Someone says that if, if your objection is taxation isn't violence, it is. Just try not paying your taxes. If you, if you believe wholeheartedly that taxation is not violence – I implore you to not file your taxes next year. And then send them an, a message. Send them a, a piece of a letter to the IRS and say, I did not pay, pay your taxes because I believe that they are not enforced with violence. I, 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 am, I triple dog dare you. <laughs> um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take, uh, Dave, you're talking about, you're talking to people who were robbed, right, on, on tax day, maybe you have to pay something. I, I, I want to mention those people who actually got a refund, well, you know, refund, um, and uh, you know, say the uh, the great the great uh, word intoxication, right, which is <laughs> just the, the euphoric feeling of receiving a refund on tax day until you realize it was your your money to begin with, <laughs> right, and that you know it's just the stolen amount of the stolen money that they decided to graciously give back to you <laughs> that they will not spend on, you know, whatever nefarious reasons they were going to spend it on. <laughs> um, but also I wanted to point out the, um, I don't know if you touched on this. I think, I think Jeremy did the, uh, uh, the black and white logical fallacy, which is, you know, if, if government doesn't build a rose or nobody's going to build it, you know, if government doesn't, um, doesn't, you know, control the currency, we wouldn't have currency, right? If government doesn't, doesn't teach the kids, everyone's going to be illiterate, right? So, <laughs> or the false dilemma. So, you know, people have to realize that, and, and which is basically the same as saying if, if government doesn't subsidize, you know, or, or control the, the growing of, of crops, then everyone's going to go hungry. <laughs> We're not going to have food to eat, which uh, is something that people have to come to terms with that, um, there's farmers out there that want to make money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and 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 you know, you, w people tend to attribute progress and and you know technological advancement with government. Like they, you know, they say, "How do you? What are you talking about? Government is bad. Look at everything that happened: the Industrial Revolution, philosophy, you know, the, the rise of the Those machines, the internet, in spite. <laughs> in spite of government. You know, people. It's the association of us with government or us with the ruling." class right but we are fundamentally separate we have different different motives and different incentives and so it's very dangerous when you align yourself with with uh, you know sociopathic megalomaniacs and uh and i just gotta tell people stop doing that please <laughs> <laughs> you're not like that do you do you kill somebody and say it was war it was war. I had to do it. You know, <laughs> like, do you rob someone? I'm just taxing you. I'm just taxing you. Stop resisting. <laughs> Newspeak is alive and well. It is. It is. So, um, so thank you very much, everyone, for an awesome conversation. And thank you, everyone, for listening to the Seeds of Liberty podcast. Um, and if you want to learn more, please visit our website, theseedsofliberty.com. And if you want to donate some uh, fiat currency, um, Please, you can do so on PayPal or you can also donate 
through Bitcoin, we would uh, never turn down some voluntary donations. That's the way. Uh, <laughs> that's the way wonderful yeah. projects thrive and grow and flourish. Ne next week, um, next week we're going to have our friend Adrian on to talk about homeschooling with Jeremy and Danilo. I'm thinking I might sit out for that one. I don't know. We'll see. I don't really have a lot of input when it comes to homeschooling, but next uh, week we're going to be talking about unschooling, homeschooling, whatnot with Adrian who ho homeschools his kids. Jeremy is going to be homeschooling his kids at one point, and Danilo is currently homeschooling, correct? Well, well I'm, we'll I'm, be I'm, soon. I'm kind of with Jeremy too, yeah. We're, we're basically yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that'll, okay. be, that'll be a good for you guys to ask him questions. You know, He'll be able to answer a lot of stuff. Yes, yeah, so if if, no, if nobody else gets anything out of next week's episode, I know I will. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's gonna yeah. be great. So he's been doing it for a while, right? Yeah, he's got a fifteen-year-old. So, wow. Um, I right. believe he's homeschooled that person the whole time. The whole I time. could be wrong. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So, but um, you know, uh, that's gonna be episode eight uh, next week, and it oh. will be um, seven. seven. Episode seven. 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 I'm bad at math. <laughs> At government uh, schooling, I'm telling you. You know, especially in <laughs> Alabama, it was just uh, – I never had a chance. Uh, he was he, – Dave was one of the lowest that everyone had to – you know, what's it called? Marxism, M-A-R-K-I-S-M, -M -A -A right? Marxism where everyone everyone brings their, their grades down to the lowest common denominators. <laughs> I actually was not that person. But. Marxism. <laughs> <laughs> nice so um, awesome so we're looking forward to that wonderful conversation next week I know I am uh, so thank you very much everyone for listening uh, this is the, C the Seize Liberty podcast um, and we'll see you all next week take care thank Bye. you Peace. for listening guys